Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm so excited. I have my hands on the new panel that Susanna has released from Vintage Blend Studios. Now you've probably watched her video already if you follow her channel, Vintage Blend Studio. And I'm hoping you've dodged across to her website and purchased her beautiful new panel. So I'm lucky enough to be gifted two and I'm going to have a play. So let me show you the panel. So if you're considering joining me in my color scheme and my project, you will need one of these. The top of the panel is domestic houses where the village people would live. A little fence and as you go down everything gets a little bit bigger and bigger and we've got the grand manor it could even be a hotel it's just very grand we've got the chapel and then as you get down to the main street of town you've got all the shops in a row so you've got a cafe the quilt shop the post office the butcher the grocer and the baker now what will I do with the panel? Susanna has done a few different versions just to give people ideas and released it at her retreat in March. So now it's time for everyone else to have a little play. So she's even given one to a friend. You would have seen this by now. If you haven't been over to watch, um, go and have a look at a channel where she releases it and shows you what she's done with her panel and her friends is yellow and black and it is um, a Alice in Wonderland theme. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So my turn. Last night I had a stitch and a play and I figured out my colour scheme. So I thought I'd better turn the camera on before I sail along into the next section and leave you guys behind. So first of all, my supplies. I just went to my stash and pulled out checks, stripes, all in the navy and the browns. This is an, a men's shirt. The men's shirt at the op shop are fantastic. This is actually my husband's shirt, I think. It might be from the op shop. But you can pick up little pieces of check fabrics everywhere. So have a little bit of a stash look. You might have some already. Some beiges, some brighter blues. There's that men's shirt again. It's just the gift that keeps giving men's shirts. They do a lot of navy checks and stripes for the boys. Some browns. So that's my colour palette. Like I said, a few planes as well. I don't think I said that, actually. And I've also got my box of um, just random scraps of bits and pieces, some calico, things like that. I've got my lace of all my bits and bobs, so I can sort of scrummage through all of that to find things. Um, I've got some napkins with some dandelions on them. I don't know if I'll use them, but they just sort of were sitting on my table and I love the colour and I also have dug out the fabric left from my Christmas Roxy Creations project. Now technically this is a Christmas fabric but there's little stars, there's paisleys, flowers. I just sort of felt that this might be something that I might you know use as well. And it unraveled on me and fell everywhere and I've got a hang of a mess already. Let's just get a little bit of tidy up here. Oh, that little piece, that's from um, Lucello. That was used in my Christmas Roxy project as well. So that's all good. This is a little calico bag. Now I took the rabbit off and used it in the Down the Garden Path project last year. And... Last night I nibbled more out of it and did the windows just to sort of put a, a cream onto it. Let me zoom in now and show you what I've done. So I'm going for a rustic layered crocheted lacy bits look. So I have a little glance there. I've done some running stitch just to highlight the roof and I'm using a four ply quite heavy duty crochet cotton. It's not heavy duty, it's just thick compared to my usual 
which is number eight uh, crochet cotton. That one's a DMC. It could be a wonder fill. The little thingy inside's fallen out. So that's a number eight. So that's a four ply. That'd be something you would crochet a child's uh, article of clothing for a baby. I also dug out some twine, which I've already started to uh, untwist it because it's got multiple pieces in it. And of course, good old cotton. So that's sort of the supplies so far. The fabric, oh, there's another bit of blue fabric. I like that as well. Um, so what I've done is I cut out the shape of the roof. We'll do a little house so you can sort of see how I piece it together, so to speak. I cut out the roof. I found a piece of um, lace that I cut in half about there. And that gave me the top of the house. And the bit I cut off gave me the little window boxes at the bottom of those three windows. I'm trying to stay as true as I can to the design. So if you haven't got to like I have, take a photo of it so that when you start piecing your fabric over it, you don't forget what Susanna's drawn and what you wanna sort of add back in. What I did, because uh, this was in another room, is when I started tracing out the little pieces, I traced all of them. So I had this piece of um, baking paper from the kitchen with all of the components on it. So I knew sort of that I needed, you know, some more windows, the door frame and things like that. So that'd be my tip there is trace the whole lot or take a photo at least because once you cover it, it sort of makes it a bit hard to see what you're, you're doing or remember. Now, um, before I stitched the roof down with that white running stitch, I cut out the piece of fabric for the actual house, slid it under the roof just a little bit and see I've got the frayed edge of the roof there just to add a little bit of interest. Just tucked it under the roof on top and then I couched down around the perimeter of the house the twine, put the running stitch in, invisible stitched down with itty bitty stitches just to hold that lace into position. I then start thinking about the windows and that's when I cut out the squares. And then in Susanna's design, she's got the crossbars on the window. So to highlight them, I went to the really thick cotton again, which is what I used on the roof and just did some big stitches around the window and the crossbar, and then went over it with the thinner crochet cotton and couched it down with just a few little stitches. You don't have to, but if someone was running their hands over the piece touching it, their fingernail might get caught on your big stitch. So it wouldn't hurt just to put some little stitches over everything to hold it. I then started uh, working on the door. So I did, again, the cream but I picked a darker color to do the actual door and then I stitched the door. In the top of the windows and above the door is this little arch here and here. So I found two pieces of lace that gave me that shape. And when you start looking at crocheting, see the arch there? That would make a great arch over a door. So it's just a case of, here's even another one. There's a little arch. It's amazing what you can see in lace, that you can nibble those little pieces out and pop them into your piece. Um, so that sort of finished the little house. I did tuck in a chimney before I went too far. Uh, I haven't stitched the um, smoke yet. I'll do that at some point, probably in a dark cream, but I don't even mind the charcoal colour. Hmm, I have to have a think about that. Now the little tree, I have painted a little bit over 
this here. Now, the reason I'm painting over it is I want the lines that the lace are on to disappear. They're very dark. So you'll see with the house, I started sort of using a paint pen just to apply a little bit of paint. I can still see the lines. So it's not like I'm going to forget where they are. And then when I lay lace down, they're just not gonna be seeing through the lace as easily. So just a bit of a tip, that's just a Jane Davenport pen. I believe they're in the US, she's an Australian lady, but I believe her products are in America. Not sure about the UK, if she's there, I'm just not sure. I just remember reading an article that she was now um, represented by some of the big retailers in America which was very exciting for an Aussie girl. Um, now, where am I at? Oh, the little tree. Let's get the tea towel that's Susanna. So you can see the tree is like, looks like fairy floss layered. So I did the same. I found different laces that had that shape about them and layered them all on top of each other with little invisible stitches. I'm thinking I might come back with some beads or French knots. I haven't got to that stage yet of what additional decoration I'll do. And I'll dig out a chocolate thread to stitch the trunk of the tree. And that's as far as I've got. So I'm here with the camera now, just to bring you along on my little journey. As for what I'm going to do with it, well, let me just zoom up a little bit. I've got two options. I can stitch the whole panel and make a whole decorative display, which I'm tempted to do, but I'm not sure because I've got another idea of making it into a pin cushion, not the whole panel, just the top. So in through here will be a garden lots and lots of flowers and then the fence I'm thinking of trying to make it three-dimensional and raising it up like so like a pleat and then when you look over the fence you see all of the embroidery inside there so it sort of has a bit of a, a ledge to it. Cutting it out and doing something with it. Whether it's a pin cushion or a wall hanging or I don't know yet. I'm still thinking like I literally got my hands on this piece yesterday, sat down on the couch last night and just started stitching and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Am I going to do the whole thing? I, I'm really happy with the way it's progressing. So I'm sort of not sure what I'm going to do. But anyway, that's just an idea. If, if I don't do the pin cushion and that catches your attention, my thoughts is before all this happens, stitch in here heaps of flowers and you'd probably only need to go as low as there with flowers and chocker it up like lots of ribbon and beads and really make it chunky. And then I'm thinking if that was pinched just above the fence line up a bit and stitched down, but left the fence semi standing. I like how it's three dimensional you're looking over the fence. Yeah. And then trim it back and make a, the back for it. You know, maybe a side panel of about half an inch all the way around. So it's a little bit raised. You want to put your pins in it. So you sort of need maybe the size of a ruler edge fabric right around to attach to it and then a piece to run along the back. That's my thoughts so far, but I haven't got to that yet. At the moment, it's the fun bit, it's the decorating. 
So let's just have a bit of a play with the house so you can see what I do to get started. Now I've got myself a pencil. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace the components of the little house. And when I draw my lines, I go a little bit on the outer edge because at the end of the day, I want to cover Susanna's lines. I don't want to see them. So if I draw a fraction past all of those lines and then when it gets to the fabric, I cut on the outside of all those lines, I'd be pretty confident that I've covered the little house up. So let me just... And I might make the base of the house a fraction bigger so that it tucks in under the roof. So the top line is a little bit bigger than Susanna's line. It'll naturally happen anyway because just by the way I cut it out, it'll always be that fraction bigger because I've drawn it past her line and now I'm cutting it a fraction past that makes sense and I will also draw the shapes of the windows because like I said um, if I don't and I only have one panel I will forget what the design is so a photograph on your your phone is probably a good idea too So there's the roof and it doesn't have to be exact fabric is very forgiving so don't stress if it's not not exactly right so the little windows there's a little ledge there but I won't draw it because that's going to be lace Now you could use the products that allow you to iron these little pieces onto your panel. I'm just going to leave them to one side. If I cut them up anymore, I'm going to lose them. So let's just leave those. You could, yeah, like I was saying, the product that you would then iron this onto some fabric, cut it out and then iron it onto your piece and it wouldn't be frayed. It'd sit beautifully. It'd look really neat. I want the frayed tatty look. I want threads hanging off of it. So I'm going to do it rough style. So we need to pick a little house now. Got a little blue one here. We might do the reverse. We could do a stripy little house. The check. I'm thinking this is an odd fabric. That could be in the middle. But it's a big check. It might be too big. There's this little guy. I'm thinking it's these two, actually. So that means the roof will be cut out of this. So let's just pop a pin in there for the sake of my sanity and holding it. Let's get some scissors. I think my fabric scissors are still by the chair in the lounge room. Now the beautiful thing about checks is you get some lines to follow, which is really handy so just take your time and cut out your little pieces start with your backgrounds and move forward so your roof and your house your windows and then you can start decorating and we won't need that little piece again, so I'm going to pop that away. 
and there's our roof. Now before you adhere that down, there's a few things you need to tuck in under it, like the chimney and the base of the house. So really have a think about what's behind everything. Otherwise you'll get yourself short changed on the size of maybe your fabric. So do we do sideways panels? Yeah, they're usually long, aren't they? Oh, that's going up and down if I do that. I changed it because of this crease. I might have to iron it. There's a fold there from however long it's been in my cupboard. So I might need to get the iron at some point. But we'll see. These are so much fun, this style of work. I'll follow the lines on the fabric. So let's try and get it a little straight. Like I said, don't sweat it if it's a little crooked or wonky because that just adds great character to your piece. If anything, you sort of need it to make it look, you know, rustic. I wish I had my bigger scissors. I'm making it tricky for myself. It's all right for little pieces. Okay, so let's get this little guy into position. And then it's just a case of trim it if you think you need to, because remember we've been getting bigger and bigger. Um, actually, I can see my dressmaking scissors. Hang on, let me grab them. They're actually just at the end of the table. And they are. Bigger scissors are better because you can just do that one clean chop. Yep, that's better. There we go. That's close to the shape. Now we might need to take a little bit off up here because it's going to pop out from behind the roof so let's get rid of that okay and then we should be able to slide the roof into position yep great that works a treat now what i'm going to do is using a little bit of fabric glue. I'm just going to run around the perimeter of the house and that's just going to tack it down for me to hold it. You could use invisible stitch. I'm running out of glue, of course I am. You can use invisible stitch to do it. But for the speed of filming for you guys, I'm just going to use a little bit of this. This glue. And I think I've run out. I've got some, um, the little refills that go in it. I might just be able to get enough. We use every little bit, don't we? Don't we shockers? It's not cheap to buy these little fancy things, so you just want to get your money's worth. Now this little piece will go in here. So now I can start thinking about what decorative elements I'm going to add to the little house. Is it going to be running stitch? Is it going to be putting some threads over it? 
Why is that roof a little skew with? Let me have a look at her design. So there's no overhang. It literally finishes straight. So let's get that a little bit better. That edge is a bit, a little bit wonky. Not that it really matters. Okay, so now we can start thinking about our little windows. So where's my little calico bag that I've been nibbling bits and pieces out of? And I'll cut. We'll assume they're both the same size. That's the bigger window. Now, like I said, if you want to be really precise about this business, probably using the iron-on papers, you know, where it's got the glue on it, would really help you get things nice and straight and not fraying and neat. So now I've got my window. Let's see if we can get ourselves a couple more. I find this very therapeutic, piecing together bits and pieces to make something. Back in the day, it would have been needle turn applique but the slow stitch world, bless its cotton socks, you just go for it. It's like bringing textile art more into our craft rooms. It's loosened us all up, I reckon. Okay, I'm just trimming my little, just want all the bits are everywhere here. So these windows, are they long ways or are they stand, they're standing up? They're the taller of the two and they're on the bottom. We can get rid of that piece. They're not the same size, so let's just have another little snip. You will lose a little bit of Susanna's design in the process of doing this so unless you want to you know hold that true you would then probably consider embroidering the piece and not using too much fabric you might do a mix of both windows are a bit big but I'll just get them cut whoops I'll get them cut out and then we can always adjust them everything gets that fraction bigger as you so once I get all these components into position I can then have a think about how I will um, embellish I, I tend to like to look at houses with the guttering in mind, the window ledges, just those classic house lines. Like that one there has a great edge. That'd be fantastic for lace. This little, little calico bag is the gift that keeps giving. Got the rabbit off of it. It was given to me as well. It was found in an op shop by a, a relative. And she was like, I don't know if you can use it, but I found this. It was like 20 cents or something and had a little bunny on it, which I nibbled out for that down the garden path project. And the little bag itself, like even those Hessian drawstrings, they'll end up somewhere. So now we've got the little top windows. 
Oh gosh, they crooked. Goodness sakes. Just want a little gap between the roof and the house. Now, because I've extended fabrics a little, I don't have as much clearance there as I did. So I'm just going to just adjust, adjust the pieces. Guess I've got some lines going through this little house. I could even do a little bit of camphor stitch or running stitch through them just to give the more of a quilted look to the little cottage. And I'm going to take off just a fraction because I'll put a window box on these as well. Just want to see a little bit of that chocolate background. Is that the same size? Gee, I hope it is. Close enough. There we go. So we need some glue. These are the little refills that you buy with these. Is it so line? Yes, yeah, so line. And then you get these little glue sticks. How do they go in is a good question. Oh, I'm getting glue all over my fingers. How does that go in there? This is the first one I've actually had to change. Is it just wind out? Yep. Oh, there. That's easy. Hmm. Does that go in like that? Oh, okay. There you go. And then you wind it down. But well, there you go. Okay, so it just sits on top and down it goes. Gee, I've used a lot of glue. That's surprising me. Now I've got glue everywhere. Good one, Corinne. Touch these things. Bit sticky fingers. All right, we're back. Now, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I will put a little bit of glue there for this, but I'm also going to get my art glitter glue. This fabric is really coarse. So I'm just going to put a little bit around the edge. It'll just help keep those fibers from just fraying to nothing. I didn't do it on that other house and it's okay, but I can just tell that, see there's a little bit that's just come off. That'll just make me feel a little bit better that it's not just gonna disintegrate over the years to come. So I'll put a little bit there. The quilters use this glue stick a lot when they're doing like English paper piecing Instead of basting, they can pop a little bit of that glue in just to hold it. I believe it all just washes out. That's good. Plus, if I'm on the couch, my piece is wriggling around in my hand. At least I know these, these little bits aren't going anywhere. Just take your time, enjoy the process. When I started the other little house here and I was sort of thinking about how I was going to do the window frames and I got that really thick crochet cotton. I was in the process of cooking dinner and sort of wanted to get it at least started so that when I did get to the couch after dinner, I'd be ready just to stitch for the evening. So I just started testing a few little spots. I'll do this, I'll do that. Stitching a little bit. And I was using that thick crochet cotton, which is really designed for clothing. You probably make them a little jacket for a baby out of it, four ply. And I kept putting the needle through the fabric in the wrong spot. So I'd have to unpick it. And I did that one window 
probably about four times. And every time I pulled this thick thread back out, it'd pull the fabric and, oh, I felt like it was disintegrating in my hands. And I started to get really stroppy. <laughs> and I was like, ah, it just won't work. And I, was, I could hear the beeper on the oven beeping at me. I was trying to run a load of washing. I was doing too many things at once. And I was getting really, I was getting scotty. So, <laughs> oh, and I'm pulling at the fabric and it's puckering. And I was like, oh. So my husband was like, what are you doing in there? I was getting angry. That's what I was doing. I was getting frustrated. So I thought I, I threw it. <laughs> you guys would be surprised. You'd be thinking, that girl, she's so patient and quiet and gentle. Don't kid yourself. So I sort of chucked it. I went out and I dealt with the oven that was beeping and I changed the washing into the dryer and, you know, just focused. Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't put the chimney on. But that's okay because... Let's put the chimney on the front of the roof. That would work a treat. Now the chimney for there and there, I used a check that had quite a big, quite a big um, check because it gave me a really lovely chunky chimney. at that beautiful piece of fabric and I've just taken out that <laughs> see what I mean this makes for a great great chimney those thick checks let me just whiz around there with just a itty bitty bit of glue so this chimney is sitting on the front of the house we'll make more of a feature of it on this little house there you go so, what next? The door. Let's have a play with the door. Okay, so it's a little triangle top roof. We can use, use this little scrap here. Where's my pencil? So let's get the shape first of the actual door. make it a little bit bigger than what it is because I'd say the little roof I'd be pretty confident I'm going to make that into with lace you know embellish it with lace let's have a look at some of these scraps that are sitting around here oh fabric scissors paper scissors colliding do one thing at a time I was trying to be time saving and cut it out all in one hit I'm thinking of you guys sitting here watching me fiddle around with this let's just do it one step at a time Corinne don't be rushing otherwise you get Scotty <laughs> oh dear I'm pretty patient Especially if I'm enjoying it. It's like I'll fiddle with something for ages. Because I'm enjoying the fiddling with it, you know. So there's the the painted surround for the, the door. So what's next? I guess the decision is do we stitch in? I think we'll do another door. So you would need to make sure you have all these pieces traced before you go and cover it with fabric. I'm just lucky I've got two of them here. So now we've got the actual fabric of the door. mind a blue door let's go to this 
there's a little spot in amongst this yeah here It's a very messy little, got little bits everywhere, but keep your decent bits because you just never know. Well, don't go overboard, but like, seriously, we say that and we keep it all and it just gets out of hand, doesn't it? Now, how wonky is my door? <laughs> a little bit. Needs a little bit of a squaring up. Oh, this is great. Now I can sit tonight when I get back from work and have a stitch and all my key components will be into position. So I'm happy with that. Let's just put a little bit of that glue there to hold it. Then to help with my fraying of edges, just a little itty bit. It doesn't have to go around the whole edge. So once you catch a few of those little threads, it's not going to go anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's a bit wonky, don't sweat the detail. Now I'll use that thick cotton as well to embroider. I really like how it's made it look like a bit like icing. Am I seeing that? Is that the... But I've also got the thinner crochet cotton, so I might do little stitches around the edges of doors. Like, let me zoom in a little bit now. So all the major components are in place. And then it's just a case of I'll be doing Big long stitch across that window, down the side, across the bottom and up and then couch it down with this so that it doesn't catch. Now as for the door, let's have a look at her design. Yeah, there's a few little details. There's a number there. It's a bit small, but I might be able to stitch it in. So there's lines on the door, so I might be able to stitch across. See those lines? And then down, plus around. Yeah, it, it's going to be great. Now the roof. I've got my little chimney is my little feature. Then I could probably, I think I'll look for some lace that'll go across the guttering. Like a find a little edge, a little scalloped edge on something like that. It's fiddly, but I might be able to cut that itty bitty edge out. Just so that it's just sitting there like so. I think I will, I like that lace. Let's just take ourselves a little piece. Plus, I haven't used it yet. Let's put the glue lid back on. Let's just cut that off of there. And we'll work out probably there. So I might just trim that off. And that bottom edge that I'm trimming off might be able to be used for the window sills. That's what I did at the other one. What I took off the bottom was enough. Yeah, that'll do the window sills. There, there, and I might make it a bit different, this one, and do a window box there because this is so fine. So let's get that into my box of tricks. Ready for the project?
There's a container, you know, my usual style. Set up the container. So there's that little piece. This little piece will go there, the top. I'll need that cotton and I'll need that cotton. My needles are still sitting in my fabric just over here. So my needles are with me. All right, so let's put that. I have to come back and have a think about the little roof and the little steeple. I should be able to stitch all that. Most of that will be stitched, but I will need to find something to go around the top of the door frame. And it's possible that this might also do that as well. I very much think so. So I might need, I might have enough might have just enough to do what I need there. Okay, um, I think that's it. I think we've got all of our bits on. That'll sit for an hour or so, or actually most of the day, and dry. And then when I come back tonight, I can be ready to embellish it with threads. I think the other thing I was going to do is use some of the crochet cotton and I might do running stitch through the house. Technically you should have done that before you put the windows and the door in, but it doesn't really matter. You can sort of tuck in under and pop back over here. Could even do something on the roof. We'll have a play. We'll come up with something. But I know I wanna use the, the wider thread for the windows and the narrow one for a little bit of detail. Um, we need some of the twine. It's starting to really unravel, but actually, why don't we use the twine out of this? I said I was probably would. That other twine's starting to come adrift because I've been fiddling around. Let's let's get this out of here. Salvaging. Yeah, they're good. And what it will do is we might frame it some way as a bit of a feature. So it might be the roof, it might be the house, or I'll use maybe that on the roof and that on the house. Do the reverse. I'm thinking I might. So we'll put that in my little box of tricks. We'll save those bits. Okay, I think that's it. That's a really good start. Then we'll have this little guy. I'm thinking this little guy is going to be blue. Not sure if that's the right blue, but we'll get to that. That'll be another day. So I'll leave you alone now. You guys have a lovely day. I'll do some stitching on this this evening and I'll be back with a update and we can start working on this one next. Mm, love it. All right, guys. Oh, I might stitch the, the trunk too. Get that all done. Maybe the grass. And then I've, I'm finished over here. Other than embellishing if we go down that track. Which I'm sure we will. All right, guys. Look after yourselves. I hope you join me on the project. Or on one of Susanna's projects. And have a go at her gorgeous panels. So it's lovely. Aussie girl having a go and going to the next level in her business and printing some of her designs, hopefully more in the future, on uh, panels for us to embellish. Okay, look after yourselves and uh, have a great day. Bye. <music>